So the next session is called Best Practices in Power BI. So yeah, I think it's really cool that it's gonna complement all the sessions and you know the the topics that we have been talking. So now let me introduce to this session again. And yeah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello again. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, we we are now uh, we are five minutes early, but if you need more time or or you are good with time, it, it's okay. Feel free to to deliver your session. And no, it's I'll okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I think people will enjoy, you know, and also, uh, guys, if you still have questions or want to, you know, talk again with our speaker, just this is the time. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to to join us again in the global platform, global power platform bootcamp, and I'm highly excited to be here once again, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get started. I hope we all can hear me. We all can hear me. And if you have any question, I really wish this section can be interactive because um, we all we, we could, the session is going to be on uh, best practices in Power BI. But again, some people say that what we call best practices sometimes are what people we think people that are experts, their preferences. This may be true and it may not be totally true, but I mean, for someone to reach an expertise level, it means that they have, um, I mean, they have seen far and wide in a particular tool or a particular skill and they know what to work best. So it may not necessarily be what we call, what we call, um, what we call um, expert preference. Yeah, but there are some things we need to just take note of there are, and because of the way people learn power bi the challenge i'm saying is that you know when you learn it too you want to make it less difficult at the beginning so those things that you overlook at the beginning of your learning journey it's very possible that they are not the best factors but okay because i'm just starting out let us do it like this. At the end of the day, you see people taking these things that they were doing at the beginning of their learning journey and using it in professional um, work. So, which may not be very okay. So, uh, I will just basically be sharing some things that I've learned in my practice, in my years of training, and in working with clients in their projects. Some of them I read, some of them. I watch on YouTube channels, some of them I learned from experts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I learned from experts. So basically, I'm just sharing those kind of stuff. And um, we are basically standing on the, on how did they say it? We stand on the, should, which we stand on giant shoulders, shoulders to see far. You know, when you stand on the shoulders of a giant, you see further. So that's basically, um the, the experience that uh, it's what we have what i've compiled in my presentation today so about me i train i consult for people i help people transition into data analysis with power bi excel tableau and in, uh, in basically so and i also do some works with other power platform products like uh, Power apps and uh, power automate. Um, so basically, the section that we are going to have is going to cover because when we say best practice in Power BI, you know, Power BI has a lot of components. We have the mobile app, we have a lot of stores, we have the Power BI service. So, uh, what aspect are we really talking about? Because as a Power BI developer, you are going to see that your work is going to revolve around majorly these five things that have um have there could be some other stuff but these are your major work that you'll be doing 
you are going to be doing data transformation and cleaning, data modeling, calculations with DAX, visualization with support and dashboard. And we are going to be also doing Power BI service or uh, you are going to be working on reports builder. This presentation today is not going to mention anything about best practice in Power BI service, but we are going to see that all the things we are, that are going to be discussed are going to fit in one or more of all these things that we have here. Is that okay, ladies and gentlemen? And I'm unable to actually keep track of questions or anything, but if you, uh, if there is any question, I hope I will just quickly see and attend to it. Okay, so now this is just a, we have somebody here uh, trying to say that my computer memory is small. I hope we all can relate with this. Uh, when people work with Power BI, they complain of slow reports, like, oh, it takes a number of times to load. Oh, I mean, I'm not talking of 1,000 rows work. I'm talking of uh, millions of rows, and they complain, and the computer memory is limited. So sometimes the challenge is not your number of rows that you have. Yes, if you have more rows, it means that Power BI needs to do more work. But at the end of the day, it is not every time that it is because you have big data sets that that is why your report is slow or that you have not don't have a good performance it all depends on whether you are following some basic um from best practice you are trying to optimize your work you can optimize your visualization you can optimize data modeling you can optimize the cleaning process you can basically optimize every aspect of the Power BI development process. So if it is not well optimized, the result is that your result, your work or your published and dashboard, your published report is going to be slow. And what you're going to see is clients are going to be complaining. They are not going to complain because they don't have insightful reports. They are going to be complaining because of what? The report is slow, they click on a slicer and they have to wait for 10 seconds. They have to wait, you understand? So before before it gives out the report. So we don't we want to avoid these things. So how do we avoid them? How do we how do we avoid them? So basically, we have some things we need to do. For example, in our data modeling, we need to ensure that we do task schema. We start schema data modeling. There are some people just bring in their data set directly into Power BI. This is what I'm trying to say. Let me just um, open. So they just bring in their data flat. No, they won't separate their work into dimension files and fact file. So basically, you need to separate your work as dimension. People just think a lot of people want to quickly visualize. I mean, visualization is not the, yeah, it does like the end product, but eventually you want to have good end products. So you want to have optimized performance in your end products. So in order to have optimized performance in your end products, you need a, a, a data modeling. So there are also other types of data modeling, uh, but Star Schema is like the most popular and it's almost fit most data that you are going to have. No modeling at all is bad is bad i mean you just see some reports and you just you, you you are going to see just basically one flat table uh that like this is one report now you can if we come over here now we can basically see that this is my fact table and i can make connection directly i can connect i can connect them as a uh, i can connect this data and just uh, store to store so and again this is one of the issues we always face you um, this is one of the issues you we always face um, when you try to connect work um, when you try to connect facts to your dimension when you try to create relationships you want to ensure that it is made on one to many relationship one from your dimension table to many in your facts so or want to so that is what you want to have not many to many um so those are the key things because according if you listen to one or if you've 
prepare BI backward and you listen to one of his talk, he we always emphasize a good data model, and he will always say that um if you want to save yourself from writing complex formula, it starts with your data model. Is is that okay? But what some people do is this they just have this just open another power bi's and once they have this they just get their data directly they get the data they get data now and they get the data they create a connection directly once that connection has been created they, there is no attempt to there is no attempt to no attempt to model the data into fact and dimension. This session is not about how to do data modeling. There are materials and courses, boot camps that we can consult to learn how to do data modeling. But the key thing we should learn is that data modeling is good and we should always do it. And you can see now this is just one work and they start visualization and writing DAX immediately. So this is bad. We should not have this uh in our work so we need to take note of that we need to take note of that and another thing is that any column that you are not using in our work it should be removed basically any column that is not being used should be what it should be removed it should not be used we should not import it into your power bi so uh we might be like okay what does this save us from okay what we need to do is let us look at this report. Let's look at this report. Let me just um, come to transform data now. And you can see now that I have my dimension files, dimension file. This guy store, I need to remove duplicates. Excellent. And we can see now, if you look at it very well, it looks like everything is good. It looks like everything is good, but 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 we are going to see something in a moment. It looks like we have everything that we need. But when you close and apply, we close and apply. We close and apply. We create our relationship. Everything looks good. We create our relationship. Now in the actual sense, when I'm beginning to create my visualization and, you know, I have a goal, you know, I expect that we have done some whiteboarding. Okay, this is what I want to do. Eventually, you are not, you don't need some fields. You don't need some fields. But in order to quickly know or to understand how the Power BI engine work, we can install a tool called Dark Studio. When we install this Dark Studio, it connects to your Power BI and you can see now that when you import a data into your Power BI, what has happened is that it it's gets the data into the Power BI engine. So we call it VertiPack engine, which allows you to compress it. And it is inside the memory of Power BI. So it is from there that it, whenever you click on a button, it queries it it's from there by decompressing and giving you the output. So each row, each column of the data is not about the row now again alone. Each column of the data is being stored in that en engine. So when we come to this data, you can now see if we see what we have, you can see now this is the data. We have two extra tables created, which I'm going to come to in a moment. But when we come to our fact sales and we come to where are you? Yeah, view metrics. <coughs> Excuse me. And under these factors, we can quickly see now that we have a very high cardinality for our sales ID. Our revenue, we need it. You can see the table size. We can see this now. This is just, I don't want to spend much time here. But in short, what I'm trying to drive at is that when we look at the size of this file, let me try and save it. This file, I'm going to save it so that we can see. Unable to save document. Interesting. Let me just close this. Okay, I think I have it open tw twice. So, okay. Yeah. So now let us check. If you look at my screen now, we have it at 677 kilobytes. 
And when I come over here now and I go back to my transform data, in the actual sense, my sales ID is not a, is not a, a, it doesn't connect to any other dimension file. So it doesn't have any other usefulness, which means that I can decide to remove it. I'm not using it for any analysis. Any analysis that you want to use and that you think you need sales ID for, there is another thing you can do in DAX to get it. So we don't actually need that sales ID. I remove it and I close and apply. And I save this work. And let us go back to check the size. Can you see now that the size has been reduced by almost um, like 200, by almost 30%. The size of the file has been removed, reduced by almost 30%. It is now 420 kilobytes. So we can now see now that at the end of the day, once you have less memory, it occupies less memory. The implication now is that, okay, everything is going to be faster because it's not doing a lot of work. I believe we can see now. So the thing is, if there is anything you are not going to use in your reports, you are not going to do any aggregation by it, you are not going to use it, Remove it, remove it. So that is that about that. And when we go again into some other things, deactivate auto date and time. By default, when you come into your Power BI, auto date and time is, uh, is activated by default. And you can see on that global setting for current file, you can see now the auto date and time is activated. So if uh, even when people have dimension, a calendar dimension file. Some people still forget to deactivate the auto date and time. So if I deactivate it and I click on OK now, I save my work. Remember, we had 420 kilobytes earlier. And I come to check the size. It has reduced it by about um, 17 kilobytes. If the data is a, a, a much bigger data like 200 megabytes in the in, in size we are going to see a much more drastic uh, reduction in fact deactivated auto date and time i worked with a client and in their work they it took about something that was that takes about 30 seconds to bring out results just by deactivating auto date and time alone it was able to re reduce the query time for 30 seconds to about just three or five seconds. So all these things eventually affect what? Affects the performance of our the reports and visualization. So that is about auto date and time. We need to always deactivate it. And once it has been deactivated, remember the other time when I used the DAX Studio. Now, because if you don't deactivate it, Power BI is going to automatically create um a calendar for you inside its engine that you'll be that you use which you the other time that i showed us the dark studio i remember we saw two things here two local date file yeah maybe i should just show it again so that we can see options and settings options so let us bring back the auto date and time where are you auto load auto date and time So that and that is what is occupying some space. We come to external tools, Dark Studio. You can see look at date table and and date table. So we have these two items here, which are being created automatically because we have activated auto date and time. If I deactivate it now. We won't see it again. So the best practice that we need to ensure is that we remove it completely. I mean, uh, when I say remove, we deactivate it. So we can de deactivate it completely in global settings. So any Power BI file that you are working with, it's deactivated. So just deactivate it glo globally, and that works. So that is that about that. We should also, well, there is also what we call staging and referencing data. So what I mean by staging and referencing data is this. Let me quickly explain. I'm going to, if I come to this file now, 
because what has happened is that this okay let me let me just use my other i have it opened yeah yeah cancel this file now we're going to transform data now if you want to create your dimensions a number of times the data you are going to be working with is going to be one very big file from it you are going to create your fact file and dimension files now what a number of people what people do is they just come to this fact sales they duplicate it once it has been duplicated they want to create this and, and this theory uh, this theory columns as dimension they remove other columns and um, remove duplicates on the lowest granularity remove duplicates where are you and rename it the let's call it the geography but the implication of doing this is that it, it is a you are staging it again because when you look at it again it's you can see now that i'm it's like i'm importing the exact sales data file that i'm using again and when you come over here again you can see now so which is that if i duplicate this thing this fact sales three times and i call this guy the model i'm i identify my model column i remove other columns and remove duplicates it, you can see now that it's three times that i have it which is not um the best the best thing we could have done is we you let us remove this guy yeah so what you should do is we can call we have staged the data already inside power query and once you stage it inside power query already you just need to have it once and um, you can rename this guy you can call it our raw data raw data or something and you just need to reference it we have reference here so this raw data is what creates this and we can see now that it is equals to raw data that we have here not equals to the directory of the file in your in, in your in your computer or where you are doing it so you can now call this f sales your fact your fact file now the bot is that this guy was what you used to bring your data into power bi or your power query so it's not going to be loaded yes it's not going to be loaded so you can now remove the columns you don't need here inside your facts and you just continue to use this as a reference you reference it again you create your what your d geography from it and uh, what do you do we remove columns that we don't need remove other, uh, remove duplicates from the lowest granularity so the implication now is that we can see what we have here so it means that you only need to query the data once whenever it's being loaded not not querying the data the number of times that you have dimensions so we can just create groups you can say move to group and call this staging so we have your staging here and we just continue to reference and you bring this guy to you can call this um you can leave it as it is but the fact is we are not bringing this guy in and we have the model and inside my D model, I do what? I remove other columns and I do what? Remove duplicates. I have removed from here. And we can see what we have now. We can do it one more time. We reference it again. We identify my other column uh, line of business that is a dimension. Uh, remove other columns. Yeah, perfect. And what do I do? the lob that is the name of this and i remove duplicates now everything looks good i have all my files the facts and i need to just remove this guy like i said remove this and this they are not needed in my facts table remove columns okay everything looks good everything looks good before i leave yeah so that is about staging and reference so once you are done you can do what's close and apply. 
close and apply. So there is one other thing we need to do that also affects performance because it's all about memory. We care so much about memory and we want to make sure that it doesn't take too much memory. So what is it? When we come to transform data, again, your date column in your data, when you look at it, this is our date column. By default, uh, luckily this one is already a date type. It's a date type already. But in some data, when you bring it into your Power Query, it's it's going to be like a date time. You can see this extra time and extra time um, part of it, which is not informative at all, unless it is informative. But if it is not informative, make sure that your date column is date type and not date type, date um, date time. If it is date time, it's, uh, you know, it's been stored somewhere. So it's going to occupy most memory in your, in, in, in the coin in the it's going to occupy much more memory mm -hmm. uh, so what's happening so um so that's that about that about that so let's go back to our our presentation using variables for measures and remove unnecessary interactions between visuals so i'm going to demonstrate remove variables variables for measures in a moment now so let us make use of um let us just make use of, uh, let me close this. Yeah, don't save, let me close this. Yeah, Pell says analysis. So now we have measures that we use. A lot of people, for example, when you start learning Power BI for DAX, a lot of courses that you will see, or a lot of instructors, they want to introduce DAX in a, not so difficult way. So a lot of time it's, you don't start learning DAX by using variables from what I have seen that is common. The implication is that the learner things are okay. If I want to create a mayor, the way I need to create a mayor is by creating one mayor, then I create the next mayor, I create the next mayor. For example, when you want to create find percentage, I want to find percentage, for example. So what you could do instead is you have a table, for example, and I want to find percentage sales. So what I can do is this, my revenue, and I have my region, and um, I have this guy. So what I've done is you first of all create a measure what some people will first of all do is they first of all create a measure called revenue last um, re re revenue total, the revenue total, and which is this measure that I have over here, revenue total. So we have this revenue total. After doing that, the revenue percentage is going to be what? So revenue percent is going to be another measure, which means that you now have what? Two measures. So measures basically we demand your CPU. It's CPU, it's, it doesn't really affect your memory. So because it's not being stored, it's created, it's uh, the output is going to be when you need it, that is going to compute it. So which is going to be demanded on your CPU. So if you don't have a very fast CPU, or even if you have, you still want to ensure that it is very fast. Each milliseconds matters. So now this is what we have, revenue sum, revenue total, revenue percent. Because I wanted to create this revenue percent, I had to create revenue total, which is not a measure I actually need. What you could have done instead is to do what? Create a measure directly using what? Variables. So the revenue total is just going to be a variable and not a what? And not a measure. So we can have a measure now, which I have over here now. I don't know. I believe we can see it now. Revenue percent with variable. So this is more efficient way to work. It is more efficient way to work and it's going to demand less, uh, less uh, CPU time from you. So that is about measure. Let us learn how to use variables instead of creating one measure, then you create another measure, then you create another measure. 
So we can see now that we have been talking about, um, just like I mentioned, data transformation. We talked a bit about modeling. We talked a bit about calculations with DAX. So there are still so a number of things to cover. We still have a number of things to cover. When you want to, uh, this is about visualization. And when you create visuals in Power BI, you want to use a table first approach. What table first approach means is that irrespective of what you want to what you want to do, you always want to see how it's being computed first. So you want to ensure that, oh, is my formula correct or not? So a table first approach allows you, it's, eventually you don't, you, may not need to, you don't need to present your work with a table, but use table to first of all say that, okay, is the formula I've written correct? So it allows you to validate first. Then you can now convert that table to whatever you need it to be. So for example, now this is table first. I'm very sure that, okay, this revenue total is dividing this revenue sum by revenue total. So what I could do instead is I don't need this revenue sum. I don't need revenue total. I can convert it afterwards to any visualization I want to, any visual I want to convert it to. So you once you just click on a particular visual, it converts automatically. It converts automatically. So a table first approach is a good way to work, especially when you are writing complex measures. So you just use table to say that, okay, I'm trying to make this, I want to see Northwest alone. Okay, make sure you see it in a table first before you transport it to another, another, another visual. So I was, this is what I was explaining about when you work with uh when you import so when you import the pattern is you have your query you have your tabular service you have your dax engine the vat pack is what is going to compress that data that you are bringing in and um it compresses and when there is a refresh or you 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 click on a slicer it takes it from it, the, it, the file first of all get decompressed and before it gets output to you which is not happening with a direct query so a direct query using direct query approach of imported data can be advantageous when you have a very big data set because when you have a very big day when you have a very big data set and you are using the vertical pack engine yeah, whether you like it or not, uh, I mean, unless you are using a very super computer, it's still going to be a little bit slow. So why just don't you use direct query approach instead? And another thing is that um, we should learn to, to possible. That is if it is possible. If you can take your transformation step, your data cleaning step, if it can be done upstream. So you want to do it somewhere else before you bring it into Power BI. So you want to do it with uh, any tool that we do it, that it is it's not going to demand too much load like uh, SQL or whatever. So it, that is also another thing we can look at. So is this just to make us understand that better? So um, I just want to show us show some, some some tips again this is about productivity when you work with uh with power bi we have a lot of fields like this now you have a lot of feeds open you have a lot of feeds open where's my mouse you have a lot of feeds open i i believe we can see it now we have it opened i've been working i've been working and you can see it takes a number of times so let's assume i have of 10 of these and I want to collapse it. It's not efficient to now do like this. You do like this. It takes a number of time. So I mean, how, more, how long do you want to keep doing that? So what you can do instead is you, the feed item here, you just collapse it and decollapse it. And we can see now that everything has been, everything has been collapsed already. Everything has been collapsed already. So let me just expand all of them again. I expand this guy, expand, expand. So we can just do like this. Just collapse the collapse. You can save it as a collapse. Instead of collapsing every all of them one by one. Okay. Another thing is that when you use the DAX, the DAX, uh, the DAX, the formula bar. For the formula bar, now let me go to my. 
let me go to a particular dark formula and we have it like this you can always come over here and you can just hold down control and with your with your mouse and you can scroll up or down to increase the size you can scroll up or down to increase the size you can scroll up or down to increase the size again that is that about that when we edit when we work with visuals when we work with visuals we come over here you know we have we make use of the format pane for example i have this visual and i also have another visual that i want to create let's create another one Let me create another one and I have region against region against revenue sum. Now we have this. We have this, but I want them to be properly aligned together. Yes. You can always use the guide that you have over here, the guide that you have over here. But it only works efficiently when you maybe you don't have a lot of visuals on a particular report page. But if you have a lot of visuals like this, it may be advisable to use the what? The general, under the general tab here, and you have your properties. You can use your height and width to just keep on specifying the height and width you want your visuals to be you just use it to specify the item so uh, you can do it in unit of 10 so it's much more easier for me to instead of trying to align object it's not very easy sometimes to align up. although you have this guide and sometimes you can also decide to come to your view and to on grid lines but again you just want to make sure that everything is aligned together so this is about visualization just want to make sure that it is aligned together and also we have well a dax formatter so if i click on we have one by sqbi and another one by enterprise dna so they are if they have an open source tool that we can use so what does it allow me to do the dax formatter is basically a window i can copy and paste a dax a, a dax um expression inside so if i copy and paste it's going to format it properly for me without me doing any work so what i can do instead is let me go to my let me just copy this guy so let's assume okay let's copy ctrl c this and we take it to and we paste it now and we format so we can see now that it has it has arranged it in a more human readable way a more friendlier way for us and we have some tabs here now automatically done for us so it, it, it's very efficient too so once you have done with this you just copy it and you go back to your what to your power bi desktop and uh you paste it and everything looks good. So you don't want to spend time or waste time um, formatting your code sometimes. So we have those two tools. We have one by SQL BI and we have another one by, by SQL BI and another one by Enterprise DNA. So we can use either of them that we like. So again, another, let me check if there is any question. Okay, no question. Everything okay. Okay, okay. I, I, what are the best practices for drill down reports? Okay, I'm coming back there. I'm going to answer you. So now, we have variable, variable names. So in our variable names, we want to eventually use descriptive names in our variables. Because one thing about variable names is that those variable names how what is going to eventually show in your table headers over here and remember your clients are going to be seeing it although you can decide to remove this revenue sum by region if i come to my format you can decide to just search for it title 
or yeah, you can see we have auto and short title only and you can decide to uh where are you we have some questions here um so luneta said is there a function in power bi similar to the lookup in excel okay uh, that's a good question um the, let me just quickly answer it the thing is power bi basically um it's with the help of your data modeling you don't actually need a lookup function because it looks automatically for you so this is what i mean for example what does a lookup do um i think let me check the name of the question the person that asked the question and uh, Lun luneta lewis when we what it happens what happens is a lookup functions look at another thing in another table right and it's you allow it allows you to explain your data with another field that you have in your table but if you have your data modeling done correctly you don't need a lookup remember this data now when we come to our transform data you can see this my sales data now the original data i have over here let me just show us the original data i have over here you can see now this is the original data i have it doesn't have anything that relates to with um with month year but eventually when you come to my reports i'm able to explain my data revenue by month revenue by month here how am i able to do it i can also explain my data revenue by manager name the reason i'm able to do it is because i have a data modeling which is the year so we have another thing the calendar that connects dates over here the primary it connects the two keys lowest granularity primary key to foreign key if you are someone from um sql sql and you connect it together so that i can use all these other fields to explain my data so we we, we don't really need lookup and if you want to write a dax function there are some dax function that you will not be able to write if if um how to explain if that column is not in the same i have a column for example in over here and i want i have a particular value field in my d region which is not the case here and i have another value field. i want to multiply both of them together so we have what we call related table but that is not doing what lookup is doing it's not doing what lookup is doing um power bi actually wants you to stop doing vlookup basically or xlookup you only need to create what relationship you know when you do lookup in excel you need to know um what's the name of this thing what's it called the common table um I, i'm trying to recall the exact name we call it in excel we call it um let me just open my excel to to get the actual name Yeah, the lookup value you understand your lookup value now in this case is your key that you are using to connect together that is the lookup value so you don't need vlookup in power bi you don't need vlookup you, you you can also do this data modeling in power no in power um what's it called now let me just get the name again you can also use um relationship you can also create your relationships in excel also if you want to create relationships what this is not an excel class i can if you want to learn more about it you can reach out to me i can share some links with us about that so that is that about that um, let me just continue some stars if uh okay i'm going to get back to your question question um shashi and um Lineta asks about the link for the dax formula creators yeah this is the link i can post it in the chat i can post it in the chat where um, i think i need to do it on uh, on youtube right not sure about that or maybe i can just share my presentation with um with diana and she can share it with the audience okay 
So now let us continue, let us continue. Where are you? I think I was talking about table first approach. I talk about this. So you should use, we should learn to use the general section of the format pane to align and, and to set sizes in visual appropriately. And there's also something else we need to see again. There's something else we need to see. This visual that I have here now, I've, I can use the format pane. And when you use the format pane also, you can also search. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to identify what you want to find. But if I want to do anything that relates with size, I can just search for size. You are becoming more productive. You are saving more time in your work. So it's something to help you. And again, we also need to make sure that we are updating our Power BI, our Power BI um, installation. I encourage us to install it from Power BI and from Microsoft Store. So when you install it from the store, it updates automatically itself every month. So you don't need to keep on downloading the executable file from the from the website. So for example, now the format pane has just been it has just been uh, what's it called? It has just been upgraded. So we can see now that it is more, I think it, it, it is more user friendly than before. So these are some practices that we need to do. We need to stay on top of our game as a Power BI developer. You need to stay on top of our game if we want Power BI. And uh, about a question about uh, creating drill down visual. So when you drill down visual, you just need to identify and the, the practice there is that you need to identify what is my lowest term. Um, you need to arrange them in terms of hierarchy. You need to arrange them in, in terms of hierarchy and can demonstrate with an example for us. If we want to do a drill down visual, let me just check my calendar for now if it can work. Yeah, it can work. So I want to drill down automatically to create a line chart. Now inside this line chart, we want to put, we, we want to, I have revenue, but I want to see my revenue by month, by year, by quarter. So what I can do in that case is I'm going to create what we call hierarchy. So you can create your hierarchy from here by just right clicking and you click create hierarchy. And you are going to see that you have your date hierarchy already. So you can now move those other things you want inside. So you can move your month here inside. You move to add to hierarchy. You add it to date hierarchy. And you add your quota. Do I have anything that relates to quota? You add to hierarchy. Then you add year. So you need to add it in the correct order. You can see now date, month, year. So you don't want to move from date to quarter to month, but date, month, quarter, year. That is the order of hierarchy. Yeah, so we just need to, but last, let's, let's, let us now assume that you have made a mistake of, uh, of, 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 uh, uh, of not arranging properly. This is a common mistake that I think people make. So let me just for remove. Uh, let me. Uh, okay. Let me come to my modeling tab, and I come to properties. This is my date hierarchy. I scroll down. Can you see? This is more friendly. You can remove. When you remove, sometimes people forget to click on apply changes. You can see that I've removed it strange two times here in date and month here, but I'm not seeing all the other things there. So you need to apply the changes before it will show. Do you want to delete the following items quarter here? Yeah, I want to delete it. So you can see now now you have it. So um if it's not properly arranged, let's assume I selected the year next. And then I select I select quarter. That is not how to move. You want to move from date, month to quarter. So you apply your level changes. Um, so it's not properly arranged. You just don't move. You can move like this. You can just drag and drop. Once you drag and drop, don't forget to apply level change. If you don't click on apply level changes, it's not going to be affected. So always remember to apply level changes. And um, how to use it is basically you just bring in your data hierarchy to access this for all for someone that if we don't know how to use it, and uh, you have this already and we can now use these guys to move we, we can see this is in the by date now we can now go down by month here we go down again by quarter and everything looks good we are happy 
so and we go down by here so we go low. so you want to make sure that your hierarchy is correct when you use the drill down so and you can apply drill down in a not only in line charts you can apply it in um what's it called in bar charts column chart or all those kind of charts we also need to make sure that you are using the right type of chart to represent a particular a particular visual so because we already know you, it's part of what we want to talk about selecting the right chart type when you work which, which we are just going to basically talk about uh about briefly so so about measure and calculated column so a lot of people again because of the excel background let me just check if there is a question okay so a lot of people because they are coming from excel background and in excel background you always see things arranged in rows and columns they always like to use calculated column and sometimes we overuse it calculated columns are basically not used for aggregation because when you create calculated columns it's going to become part of your uh, part of your data modeling and it's going to contribute to memory. It's going to occupy disk space. It's going to consume memory and disk space. Measures don't consume memory and disk space, which is good. It's only at processing time that you use your measure. So you want to make sure that you want to restrict the use of calculated columns to things that relate with filters. Those things you want to put in your filters and slicers. You cannot slice a measure but you can slice a calculated column. For example, in this work, um, the calendar table has been created with what? With it, 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 these are calculated um, columns. These are calculated columns. Or for example, you have your sales and you want to increase the size of um, revenue by multi multiply by 1.5 as this. So you can create a calculated column for it. But why don't you use DAX instead? Why don't you use DAX instead if it is an aggregation you want to do? But if you want to use something for for um, that you want to eventually put it in a slicer or you want to filter by it, then calculated column is what you should use. So it actually depends on the use case, but that is just a brief explanation about it. If you go, if you check, um, uh, what's the name of this book by Marco Russo again? So um, I'm trying to record the as and I'll get it and, and mention. So he has a lot of uh, explanation about it. So it really depends. It really depends when you use uh, what you want to do. But again, most of the time, you will always be able to use measure for whatever we want to do. And again, we want to talk about data visualization because uh, a lot of people do web visualization and you see that okay maybe this is not the best way you should do it i just want to quickly talk about it we cannot finish talking about best practice with data visualization for example when do you use column charts when do you use bar charts when do you use a tree map when do you use a line chart we cannot completely talk about it but we can just briefly talk about certain principles so you want to make sure that you use the right the right chart type you want to make sure you use the right chart type if you are using time series, for example, you should use what? Time series is line chart. If you want to compare two, um, two values together, you want to compare transactions, number of transactions, for example, in sales data, number of transactions with revenue. Those are two, um, the, those are two quantitative variables. So you should use a what? What do we use in that case? You use a scatter plot. You use a scatter plot. So we use bar charts with categories, column charts with categories, for example. And um, oh, there is something about bar chart and column charts. For example, it is about visual perception. Let me check the time. I have about 10 minutes more. OK, so let me just quickly show this. Where are you? When you come over here now, what happens is a bar chart uh, with bar chart bars. You have bars and um column chart they are like um how do you call it alternative but one is better than the other in some cases uh, so let us create a day let us create 
work to demonstrate what I'm trying to say. Let us use a, um, I think I have up to a number of models. And then I'm, I'm going to select revenue sum. So now you can see what I have now. Let me just control C and control V. And I'm going to convert this to a column chart, for example. So uh, this is not about, uh, this is a, a product of, what I want to mention now is a research work carried out by, um, I don't, do I call them visual scientists? So the way our eyes read, majorly, it reads from top left corner. So which means that if I'm looking at this bar chart now, this one horizontal, the bar chart, it's easier for me to read compared to this because instantly I'm seeing 3002 P model, I am quick. I quickly know that it is the highest. But over now, over here now, what happens is that I first of all see that okay, this guy has the highest bar. Then my ass needs to go down to know the value, which is against how our eyes see things normally. The way your eyes see things is it's read things from the top left corner. So automatically now, even without checking the values yet, I can quickly know which one ranks better than the other so a number of times if you have more categories you want to show it's better to use a bar chart if you have a lot of categories because you don't want to stress your audience it's not about beauty it's about you want to make life comfortable for your audience so that is that about uh, about that but we can't finish talking about chat type so i just we need to remove ambiguity in your you remove unnecessary things from your chart and you also need to use color efficiently so lead the eye don't just use colors i mean a report should not have most good reports should not have two or three more than two or three um colors being used so by the time you have a report and you have almost all the rainbow colors then it may not be very good and also when you design visualizations the best practice is you design for um color blindness so um because some people have color blindness so they are unable to differentiate between red green and blue so we need to take note of that i'm going to talk about that we are we also need to declutter reduce cognitive load so those things that are not needed for example you don't you don't want to use you don't want your grid line if it is needed at all to be too visible so there is something some people do this report now for example uh, uh, they are going to use grid line in the same reports they are going to use data labels we have what we call data labels so once you use data labels now you don't actually need your x-axis again your this x-axis you have labeled your once you label directly you need to remove this this is cognitive load when you use data label and you have x-axis so you also want to make sure you declutter when you when you when you when you design visualization and you need to virtually tell a story it is not about beauty you need to tell a story so this is what i was saying about color blindness so for color blinded people this is how they perceive this color so which means that when you show a visual in your reports you don't want to use these three colors together you don't want to use green yellow and um, red together at the same time or the primary colors green um the primary green blue red and blue you don't want to use them uh, together because of what because of because of color blindness because you can see now they will be unable to differentiate between them so this is what a normal person sees with normal color vision and with red green color blindness so some people are red blue color blindness and some people are blue green color blindness so you don't want to use those colors together so i can't finish talking about color in today's presentation i'm just mentioning that briefly so i just want to show us this is a, a remake of a particular chart i know that a lot of us you might have even seen it in um in uh, big media in um print media in magazines uh, i'm i'm sure we may have seen this kind of visual before which may be excellent to some people but let me just play the video so we watch
So let me replay it again for us. I want to replay the visual, the the So I believe we can see where we started from and what we have next. So one final thing I want to talk about visual is a lot of times when, hello, ladies and gentlemen, can you still hear me? As in so. So a lot of times when we use, when you talk about visualization, people don't know that simple text is a visual. It is not every time we need to plot some charts. So a text can be a visual. So. When you want to show one or two numbers, you may not need a visual. So look at this visual now that I have by my left. You can represent it in another way with a simple text. And it will also be very impactful. It will be very impactful. So the remake is what I have by my right. So the same information represented over here now, yeah. over here is what we have near. And we can see now the same information. So if you just want to show two numbers, 20% and 41%. This one by my right, that is a simple test, it takes lesser time to read. Because for me to fully understand this, I need to read all the text here. I need to read 41%, 20%, 90, 70, and 20, 12. But if I just stay focused on this simple text alone, I can understand what you are trying to communicate. The purpose of chats is to quickly communicate. So if you have a chat that you use and it takes a long time to communicate then maybe you should not use it all these things apply to power bi report and visual and that is that and lastly about dashboard a dashboard should be a single screen it should be a single screen so you want to avoid scrolls you want to avoid scroll you don't want to scroll in your report pages and also it is good if you stick to custom visuals because visuals that are not um that are not um, did I say custom? Certified visuals. Use certified custom visuals. I wanted to write certified custom visuals. Visuals that are not certified may not be optimized for very good performance. So this is so you can get list of certified perform um, visuals when you come to get more visuals and you come over here. So and you can identify. Um, you can see the one the ones with blue ticks are the certified uh, visuals and if you have a power bi report because a lot of people say that oh the space in my canvas is too small to do what to build dashboard the thing is it is not too small it is not too small yes this is what i have but you can change it you can change this space that you have that is available for you, you come to visualization and uh, where are you you come to format pane page information, mm. canvas settings, yeah. yeah, canvas settings type custom, and you can adjust the size of this guy so that it takes more space. It takes, you, you are able to put a, a more things there. So I'm going to be able to put more visuals inside this report page. That is the implication. So you can adjust this height and width to fit your need if you need to put more visuals in your what in your power bi report so you can always have more space you just need to change the settings uh, you just need to adjust it so in some other visualization so you have it by default a very big canvas but in power bi you have a very small one but you can adjust the size to fit your what your custom your custom need uh okay so that is that about that so instead of using scrolls on your report page you should do what you should adjust the size you should adjust the size so that is all about my presentation thank you ladies and gentlemen for listening i'm highly delighted to be with us i'm highly delighted to be with us if you have question you can let me know you can let me know let me check the uh, I don't know why I can't comment on the, it seems I can't make comments on the YouTube link. I want to post.
Not sure. Okay. Now I posted the link already. And I can post the second link. Link. So that is that. And there is also a very good down. Um, okay. Maybe we just that's all about my presentation. If you have any question, I'm checking the chat. so much and it was really cool to see it as well and you know how it can manage all the data and I personally I really like the dashboards always and I love the dashboards I think it's my favorite part of uh, working with data <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon I was saying uh, personally my my favorite part of working with data are the dashboards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves dashboard. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, we don't have more questions, but yes, this congratulations and thanks. So yeah, really cool. I want to show again with all of you, our, oh, okay, thank you. Our survey, remember, uh, if you answer just this survey with your basic information and the name of our user group, Boston Power Platform user group, uh, you can send your feedback and, you know, let the global organizers, uh, your favorite part, uh, or if you maybe then like something, uh, you can send us as well. You know, we, we can always improve. So, and you, and the best part is that you can get a chance uh, for win some cool swag. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many, but there are Amazon cards and maybe Oppo devices, I, and you, if you want more information uh, in the social media of the event, in, on Twitter especially, there is a bunch of information that you can follow for the prices. Um, okay, um, well, I think I'm going to pass on our next, next speaker. And uh, thank you, thank you so much, Hafez. Looking forward to be with you again. And it's great that uh, you are part of the Boston Power Platform User Group as well today in our chapter with the Global Bootcamp. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm highly excited to join you. <laughs> yeah. I hope to join you in some other sessions later. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye. Bye, have a wonderful day. All right, so we're going to continue with the agenda. And now 